In this video, we're going to look at Google Groups. Google Groups allow you to create groups for online and email communications. You can create a Google Group for your class to quickly send an email to all students. You can also use Google Groups for online discussions. In this tutorial, we're going to look at Google Groups to send email messages to your classes. The first thing that you'll want to do is collect your student email addresses. Now, I suggest you um, set up a Google Form to collect your student email addresses. This is an example form that I have created and I have um, turned on the feature to automatically collect the username when the form is submitted. And this means that the students will not have to type in their npsne.org username. It will automatically be collected. And since that's the information that you really want, anything else that you add to the form is kind of optional. I added a uh, last name, first name, and then class period choice. And I'm going to use this same form for all of my class periods. So by having the student enter in their class period, I will be able to sort my results based on class period. So once you set up your form, you then need to share it with a student. You can either embed this form on a School Fusion page or a blog or a website, or you could create a QR code to this form and have your students scan the QR code with a personal learning device in order to take the um, to use the form. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click on my drive, and we're going to create a group. So your groups are up here in the black navigation bar that runs across the top of your screen. Go ahead and click on Groups. And once Google Groups opens, you're going to click Create a Group. Give your group a name, and I suggest maybe using your class name and the period, the class period. As you enter the group name, you'll see the group email address automatically populate with the same information. Now this is kind of a long email address, so I'm going to truncate this and make it a little bit shorter. I will still know that this is keyboarding period 3, but this is a much shorter email address to have to type in. So my email address for this group will be K-E-Y-P-E-R-3 at NPSNE.org. Go ahead and enter a description for your group. Scroll down and we'll take a look at the group type. Now you can create Google Groups for a variety of different reasons, um, but we are using this for an email list, so we're going to leave it set to email list. Let's scroll down and look at the permissions. Now even though we're setting this up just to simply email a group of students, we still need to set up some basic permissions. So the first option is View Topics. This determines which topics uh, users will be able to look at. Um, notice that by default, all organization members are checked, which means any person in NPS can actually see the topics for this particular group. So we're going to uncheck that so that only the members of the group can see the topics. The next option is post. Who do you want to be able to send messages to this group? If we click on that, you'll see again here that all organization members are uh, is selected. We need to unselect that. And I would also maybe recommend selecting all unselecting all members of the group. If you unselect that option, then only you, the owner, the manager of the group will be able to send messages to the group email address. And the last option is how you can join the group. And I want to um, specify who is going to join this group, so I'm going to select only invited users. That means I am the only one that can add users to this group. Once you've got your permission set, you're going to go ahead and click the Create button. Okay, once the group is created, we need to add some members to it. So we're going to go over here to the left-hand side and we're going to click on My Groups. This is going to bring up a list of the groups that you are a member of. You're going to find the group that you just created, and in my case it's Keyboarding Period 3, and I'm going to go ahead and click on that to open that group. Over on the right hand side you will see a Manage button. Go ahead and click Manage. And then scroll back over to the left hand side and take a look at the Members. We're going to go ahead and direct add our members. So click direct add members. And here it's asking for email addresses to add as members. So I'm going to go back to the spreadsheet where I have collected my email addresses. And remember, I used a uh, put a question in my form for class period. So to make this easier to sort based on classes, I'm going to sort this column so that I have all students in the same class together in my list. Now I'm going to go ahead and highlight the usernames um, for, the, for keyboarding period 3. You want to copy these usernames, and you can do it your favorite method. You can right click and choose copy here, or I like to actually use the keyboard shortcut for copy. So I'm going to highlight the usernames and click Control C on my keyboard. I'm going to go back to my group. I'm going to click my cursor in the Enter Email Addresses box, and I'm going to do Control V to paste. And now we can see that the email addresses that I copied off of my spreadsheet are now in my uh, on my group, Google group.
You have the option of writing a welcome message to your group. Um, if you leave this area blank, it will not send a message. So I don't want to send a message right now, so I'm going to leave this email, this place blank, and I'm going to click Add. Three members have been added to the group. To see the members in your group, over on the left-hand side, click All Members. And here are the members of this particular group. Now let's remind ourselves of the address that we set up for this group. Under Information, on the left-hand side, you're going to click General Information. And here again is the email address for this group, keyper3 at npsne.org. Now I'm ready to send an email to my students. So I'm going to click Mail to open up my mail and I'm going to click Compose, and I'm going to enter in the email address for that group. Now the first time that you send this group a message, you will need to enter the entire email address. After you send them one message, this email address will be part of your contacts group, and you will not have to enter in the entire email address. You'll be able to select it from a drop-down list. The advantage of sending your class an email this way is that this is the only email address that appears in the two line. And that can eliminate some of the unnecessary reply to all emails that might get sent if you were listing individual student emails here in the two line.